Hey, Pastor Edward Ondachi. My name is Pastor Angie. This is Pastor Victor Mudembo. Pastor Milton Jumba. Hey, yo, Kevin Kilonzi. Reverend Cheche. Toki this right here. This is Kevin Doria. This is Pastor Njoro. This is Pastor Godwin Mutai. The welcome of Una South. Wagwan Brooklyn. Mambo VP Swahili Campus from downtown. Crossroads, I hope you're there. Mavuno Hill City. Hey, Connect. Mashariki. Welcome. So glad you could join us this morning. Your campus pastor, Yuko Hapa. Adwadeka. What's up, Mavuno Lifeway? Tuko locked. So glad to have you. I hope you're watching. You know what it is. Come on now. Ngumi bado ni ngapi? Mbuegze. Come on, man. Good morning and welcome to Mavuno Church. We are indeed privileged and honored to be able to serve. And in as much as we're not physically congregated, we're still happy that we get the chance to still come together in one way or another and worship and praise the Lord. So wherever you're watching us from, I pray that you'll just take this time to connect with Jesus. Now, I know this season could be one where we perhaps feel swallowed or we feel like we can't see what's coming ahead, but the beauty of being followers of Christ, the beauty of knowing that we serve a God who loves us. We are reminded that we can rest in his presence regardless of our circumstances, regardless of our situation. Now the songs we're going to sing today are pretty much just reminding us that God's everlasting love walks with us always. Even when we can't see what's ahead, his love has gone before us. Today we are just lifting him and praising him. And I want to speak into the life of someone who perhaps is feeling overwhelmed because of one reason or another. I just want to speak into your life today and say God loves you and he knows where you are and most importantly he knows where you're going. So I'm just going to speak a prayer into our lives that God this morning should anyone be feeling tired or overwhelmed or having too heavy a burden I pray that Lord your everlasting love will fill their hearts. I pray that that, Lord, the glory of your goodness will be their portion this morning. And even as we pray and worship, dear Lord, I pray that you'll fill our hearts with your presence. Remind us that everything else comes after you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. amen. And this morning, we are indeed humbled and glad to be joined by the wonderful, the amazing Noel Deritu. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So stoked to be with you guys as we worship God together through song and we are ready. I don't know if you are ready, so get ready wherever you are and join us as we sing in song. Are you guys ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right, all right. We're going to yeah. declare this uh, beautiful song. It's called Everlasting. And so join us as we, as we worship God in song. Here we go. This song basically talks about God's attributes. <laughs> God is loving, He is mighty, and He is merciful. Very simple song goes like this. Your love is higher than the mountain tops, and your strength a river that will never stop. And your mercy is endless, it covers every wrong. You are always and forever God. Everybody say, Your love is higher. The mountain tops, your strength, a river that will never stop. And your mercy is endless, it covers every wrong, and you are always and forever God. And we declare this. And if it wasn't for your love for us, love for us. we'd be drifting on the ocean, Lord. this verse together and your name has power over everything your word your word a fountain of everlasting peace and your voice is thunder to the enemy you are always and 
forever, God. Ooh. And if it wasn't for your love for us, love for us. we'd be drifting on the ocean, Lord. Ocean, Lord. Your love has pulled us from the miry clay. The rock of ages who will never change, everlasting. Buona, Buona, Upendo Amile. Give a shout to our God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, we want to we want to declare that He is the Lord of Hosts, and it's only right that when you encounter the Lord of Hosts, that you lift His name higher. This is a simple song. It says "Bwana wa Majeshi uinuliwe," and so you need to get some space, kidogo. This is an African groove. It's from Tanzania, and East Africa ni moja, sindiyo. So let's praise God with the nations this morning. Hey. Wherever you are, sing the song with us. Very simple, goes like this. Bwana wa manje shile uinuliwe E baba uinuliwe E mungu uinuliwe Uinuliwe Let's sing that together. Bwana wa manje shile uinuliwe E baba uinuliwe Let's declare that one more time. It's really simple, let's do that one more time. Uli umba mbingu na inchi uinuliwe Fame wa wafame, mungu mwenye nguvu Baba wa milele, baba uinuliwe Wanda wa majeshi leo, wanda wa majeshi leo uinuliwe
the God of heaven and earth, yes. he calls us friend. Yes. And it's an honor, it's a privilege to be able to worship this God this morning. And so I would want us to focus on the worth of God this morning. He's the ultimate sacrifice. God came down, gave us victory through the cross. And that's the reason we gather today. That's the reason this live stream exists. It's to give God glory, it's to recognize his worth. Yes and to worship him for who he is. So let me invite you in your own words, wherever you are, to tell him that he is worthy, that he is mighty, that he is great and greatly to be praised. Worship him by telling him who he is, by thanking him for what he has done. We thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. We worship you, God, this morning. We worship you, Lord. Receive our worship, Jesus. It's a simple song, it says this. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail Thank you for the nail-piercings. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness. Oh 
attention to scripture the bible says in revelation 5 verse 1 i saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back closed and sealed with seven seals and i saw a strong angel announcing with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and to break its seals and no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it and i began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, stop weeping, look closely. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has overcome and conquered. He can open the scroll and break its seven seals. The Bible goes on to say in verse nine, and they sang a new song of glorious redemption saying, worthy and deserving are you to take yes. the scroll and to break its seals. For you were slain, sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And that is why we sing, Worthy is the Lamb. In the Old Testament, whenever people sinned, they would have to bring a sacrifice. And they'd have to do it over and over again. But we have one who sacrifices enough. His name is Jesus Christ. He died on the cross so that you may have victory. And so if you're worshiping with us and you're struggling with something, it is not by your strength that you will overcome. It's not by your power or your might. It is by the spirit of the living God. It's by the power of the blood of the cross. And that is why we sit here and say, worthy is the lamb. That is why we sit here and say, worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. And our response to a worthy God, to a God who gave himself for us, is to worship him is to lift him up on high. And so Lord, we will lift your name on high. We declare that you are enthroned in our lives. Yes. And as we go through in song, Lord, we, we desire to see you enthroned in our lives and in everything that we do. And so Lord, I pray over your people. If there's someone, Lord, struggling, if there's someone with a veil upon, their heart that they are not able to see the glory of the risen King. I pray that they will be able to see your glory in this moment, O oh God. Lord, have your way. Have your way. Yes. And if you're worshiping with us, respond by telling him, Lord, we lift you up on high. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. We thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, O oh God. You are worthy, God. Hosanna in the highest and let our King be lifted. Hosanna. Let's sing that together. Hosanna. Hosanna.
Jesus, we lift your name on high. Yes, God. There is none like you, O oh God. There is none like you. There is none in the heavens or on the earth or under the earth who is worthy like you are, Jesus. And so, Lord, as a church today, we declare that you are a worthy God. You are holy God. You are righteous. And our desire is to please you, is to worship you, is to see your name lifted high. Thank you, Father, for what you have done, what you continue to do. You are faithful. And we do not worship you because of what you have done, but because of who you are. And so if you believe that, then join in shouting amen. In Jesus' name we have worshiped. Amen. amen. Let me encourage you to give a clap offering to our God wherever you are. Put that phone down. Put the remote down and give our God a clap offering. He is worthy. Thank you, Father. Father. Yes. Amen. My name is Andrew Ranja. I am a lawyer by profession and I like to call myself a part-time politician. Uh, Kenya was having a general election and I ran uh, for member of parliament or MP as we call it in, uh, uh, in, 20, in a place called Kiambu County. It was a very interesting journey for me because I had never, I've not grown up in a political background, never been really exposed to politics and here I am, I'm a young man, I want to get into politics, I want to do it right. I didn't have a lot of money to campaign, um, and I didn't know too much about how campaigning was done, so I was really learning the process from scratch. I could not find a lot of mentors out there who could show me, hold, hold my hand and guide me, so it was a lot of trial and error. It occurred to me that there is, there are many young men and young women like me who are Christian and who want to do politics and do politics right and they want to contribute in the area of politics and governance um, and there's no one to train them, there's no one to mentor them, there's no one to hold their hand in that process and I thought if there is more of us then we probably need a space or a platform where we can come together and learn. So we need to learn, we need to be trained, we need to be mentored, we need to be handheld, and then we need to have a pool of people who support us. That's how we ended up with a program called Taifa Teule. Now, Taifa Teule is Swahili for chosen nation. And the idea for Taifa Teule is, is it possible for us to create a platform to train and to support young people who want to get into politics and governance. The way the program works is, uh, the training program works is that we have a 10 week uh, course. Uh, and so every 10 weeks we have a new season. 
Um, and since September of 2017, we've had seven, uh, seven cohorts or seven seasons, if you will. A successful Taifa Teule uh, a few years down the road would be at this, at this point, we would be able to grow into a national network of young people who, even if they're not running for political office, they are initiating projects that solve problems in their local communities. We also hope that that network, if it is across the nation, will grow into a political organization. And so if Taifa Teule is eventually able to put a few MPs members of parliament um, into, into the Kenyan parliament, that will be a great win. We will be able, we'll become players at the political level as opposed to sitting back and complaining about our leaders. My name is Andrew Ranja. It's time to be brave. Good morning, good people. My name is Pastor Angela Kimaru, and I'm really excited to be coming to you this morning. Happy new month. It's a new month. Great people were born in this month, I'm just saying. But anyway, I wanna, I'm one of the pastors here at Mavuna Church. I'm the lead pastor of Mavuna South. I want to bring you greetings from my family and my campus. What up, people? Uh, and we're starting a new series. I'm so excited about this new series. It's called Unstuck. And every time I think about, um, you know, the feeling of being stuck, I think about being stuck in Nairobi traffic. I always cringe whenever I have to leave and go to the city. I live in Athi River, which is about 30, 40 minutes away from Nairobi. And every time we leave with my husband, there's a time that we were leaving to go for worship night. And we left uh, giving ourselves two hours leeway to make it to the city on a Friday afternoon. So we left at two o'clock, but we left in a hurry because we were settling our child and we didn't check the app. There's an app that tells you, when the, you know, where the traffic is. And then we got to a place called Kappa, which is like halfway you know, towards the city. And we found that there was uh, you know, a lockdown. There was jam everywhere. There's traffic car cars everywhere. Kenyans are problem solvers. Now we found instead of three lanes, there were six lanes. We didn't know where to go. We were stuck. We couldn't turn around. So we just sat there and just looked at each other. Did I mention it was in the afternoon, Friday afternoon? It was hot. Our AC wasn't working. So now we've cranked down the windows. We're looking at each other. We caught up, you know, caught up. But it wasn't such a good place in our marriage. So we said, let's put on the radio. So we put on the radio and the guys were talking about marital issues. We and Galiana looked at each other and we said, uh, it's not going to work. And then we changed. Then they were talking about politics. You now you start getting even more angry. It's hot. You're just dying in there. Four hours stuck in the traffic going nowhere. Uh, I'm telling you, it does not uh, remove uh, Holy Spirit uh, things in me. The fruit of the Spirit does not come out of me in that situation. What happens is I just get cranky. In fact, what happened is that from that moment, my day changed. My situation changed. I was angry. I was impatient. Even when we went to worship night, when we finally got to our destination, I was impatient with people. Getting into that space of prayer was so hard. Like I had to really focus even as I was leading prayers. And that's the feeling, the emotion that I get whenever I think about being stuck in traffic. Many of us, you know, with the global pandemic, feel stuck just like this. We're in the car with our spouses. Maybe things are not going well. You're irritated. You're on a way trying to make a business deal, but you're stuck in jam for four hours. Maybe you have your kids in the car. The kids, every few seconds, are saying, are we there yet? Or the dreaded question, I need to pee, mom. You're like, where are we going to pee in the middle of nowhere? And you know, your bosses are calling and saying, you're running late again, get sorted, get to the destination. And we feel like we're missing out on deals of a lifetime. This pandemic, the thing with it is that it's affected many situations in our lives. It has affected the economy, it's affected our careers, it's affected our family and relationships, key relationships that we have. It's affected our marriages, it's affected our education system and how we, we educate people. But the truth is, being stuck in this situation, being stuck in the car this time, the social distancing has just highlighted the different situations that we're going through, or highlighted the different dramas that we're going through or the, the situations where we feel stuck. Life has become stuck for many of us. Many of you believed in God and you even followed his teachings, but then your business has been wiped out in this season. Maybe you've done the right thing, but now your marriage is still falling apart and you feel stuck. Maybe you've gone, you know, you've done the church thing for a while now and you don't mind, you know, being away from the physical gathering, but you feel yourself beginning to drift away from God. Maybe you've done some pretty messed up things in your life. You've, you know, maybe, you know, sexually you've done some stuff. There's been corrupt practices in your business, something has really made you feel like you don't deserve to be anywhere near church. You feel stuck. I want to tell you that this series 
is for you. And I want to invite you into a place where we come and get unstuck together. This month, I want you to do one thing with me. This is how I want us to posture ourselves. I want you to do one thing. What if today you could erase your memory of everything you've ever heard about God? Erase your memory of everything you've ever heard about Jesus, about religion. And what if it just went boop, disappeared? What if we, you know, we all grew up in some religious system or anti-religious system. But what if this morning you could erase everything and come with a blank slate and join me in discovering what it means to get out stuck and to meet the man who helps us get unstuck out of different situations of our lives. Some people don't even know that you're stuck until they meet Jesus. And over the rest of this month, what we're going to do is we're going to discover what it means or how to get unstuck once we meet the man who was able and historically able to remove people from stuck situations. I want to take you to the book of Matthew. And this is a, the first encounter that we're going to discuss that's going to lead us into learning about how to get unstuck. We're going to read from Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 to 13. It says this, the calling of Matthew. As Matthew went up from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting, um, well, as Jesus rather, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked the disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and, and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. He said, but go and learn what it means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this moment. I pray that you would use my voice to speak life and help us come out of stuck situations. Amen. This is what you need to know. Matthew was a tax collector. And tax collectors at that time were the undisputed scum of the earth. They were the public contractors for, you know, the Roman Empire, for the Romans. And so what Rome did is that they auctioned out the right to collect taxes to different people in all their provinces. And so different people bid for the privilege to collect taxes. And it was, con it was considered an extremely lucrative business at the time. And so what happened if you got the opportunity to collect taxes in your region, you could tax as much as you wanted as long as Rome got their cut. Uh, you know, you could keep the rest if you wanted. And so tax collectors, because they were notoriously corrupt, because they, ex uh, you know, they extorted the people far above what was owed to, the, you know, to Rome at the time, they, they would put, you know, because they wanted to make a personal profit, people struggled at that time. And so you know what happened even is when people, when this was happening, the Roman guard stood next to the tax collector collector and so nobody dared dispute or dared object even no matter how much it cost and so Jews hated tax collectors they were disgusted by them they were seen as out outcasts these guys couldn't go to the temple they couldn't do uh, Passover they couldn't join their family if you joined and became a tax collector you were excommunicated if you married a tax collector your family was like boss we're done with you and so tax collectors hung out by themselves they were loners Matthew was a tax collector. He was absolutely heated. He was seen as a licensed robber by his fellow citizens. He was a loner and limited to hanging out with specific people. Now, Jesus finds Matthew at the port uh, collecting taxes. So Jesus comes up to him, and if it was me, I feel that Jesus would have said things like, how could you? How could you do this job and betray your people? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? In fact, come here, I pray for you. Kneel down, I lay hands on you. That would have been my experience. But this is what Jesus does. Jesus looks him in the eye and says, follow me. And just like that, Matthew gets up and follows him. Matthew recognizes, he sees something in Jesus. What I think is that Matthew, because he was situationed right at the port and he, you know, he could hear and see everything, I think that he had heard about Jesus. He had seen miracles that this guy had done. I mean, we're at chapter nine of Matthew. So this guy has had all this drama and all these things that Jesus is doing and he's in a place of loneliness. He's been feeling like an outcast and a rabbi has come to him and said, follow me. Now, you need to understand, rabbis at the time in the Jewish culture, what they did is that they always got a bunch of students to work with them. And so Matthew, being a Jew, knew what that question meant, knew what Jesus was saying when he said, follow me, or what that statement meant. And so this guy, because we remember the situation that he was in his whole life until this point has been defined by, defined by greed and corruption. He hears Jesus telling him, follow me join my gang, join my inner circle, and he gets up immediately and responds to this situation. He becomes a candidate for, uh, to become part of the inner circle. 
There are a lot of things that Jesus could have asked Matthew. He could have made some conditions for him that he has to live up to. But Jesus didn't do that. He simply made one statement and said, follow me. And you know, that's the thing that, that Matthew was able to do. Get up from his chair and follow him. He can do that. He got up and responded immediately. He took a baby step and that changed his life forever. Jesus looks at Matthew and says, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. Matthew knew that this was his moment and he grabbed it. It was a simple request, follow me. Throughout the Gospels, throughout this journey that I'm asking all of us to go through in this uh, month, we're going to be learning from different men, men and women, different maturity levels, and learning how they followed Jesus, how they became unstuck from their situation, whether they were righteous or unrighteous. The simple invitation is for all of us to be a part of this journey. So this is a question I want you to ask yourself. Am I following? Am I actively following? This is the first step for us to get unstuck. You need to actively follow. It doesn't stop there and I want us to go further. Immediately we jump into the next scene and these guys after that are having dinner together. Matthew and his friends. I mean this thing is so cool and so weird. I love it. The first thing we need to notice is that the tax collectors are different from average sinners. Did you guys see that? You know, it says, you know, I, can, I may be a, a sinner, but at least I'm not a tax collector. This is how I think of it. Whenever I define sin, I say there's Satan, then there's cats, yeah? So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to say there are tax collectors, then there are sinners. Are you guys hearing that with me? Yanni, if you're at the bottom of the Bible, you can say, you know what, I'm a sinner, but I ain't a tax collector. So Matthew's friends were tax collectors. They had, you know, treat, uh, they, had, they were betraying uh, Judea and the nation. The people, uh, but then the, the people at the table were also just sinners who were with them and they were just outcasts together. So when the Pharisees saw this, so picture this, Jesus has called Matthew, then they end up going for dinner, and the Pharisees, it's like they're following Jesus. So now they see Jesus going to have dinner with this guy, tax collectors and sinners. And, and they ask, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Um, so this is the, the implication that is there. The implication is that these guys are looking and saying, how can you sit with people who have nothing to do with us? How can you sit with people who are sinners? We are teachers of the law. We are rabbis. And then I also wonder about the disciples. It means that while these guys were having dinner inside, the, the disciples were also coming out because they were questioning. Maybe Peter had been taxed by this guy and Peter is like, dude, that, I'm going to work with this guy. Seriously, Jesus, I can't do this. And so they heard this question. And let me tell you why this is such a big deal, people. This is so important, especially with everything that's happening across the world. Jesus was extraordinarily comfortable with people who weren't anything like him. And apparently they were comfortable with him too, as we can see. Just think about the disciples. There was, you know, these guys were a hot mess of a group. There was uh, Matthew, the tax collector. He was a betrayer of the, of the nation. And then there was the zealot, Peter, who was an extreme Jew. And he was sitting together at some point walking with Jesus. And then there was Judas, who was a businessman, thug. And then there was this guy called uh, Peter, who was also a gangster, if you ask me. Because who has a knife ready to cut out somebody's ear just immediately? That guy must have been a gangster. He was a thug. And then I also, also think about John. Uh, I want to call him L.A. John, L.A. John. Jay, little John. This guy was a lover, not a fighter. I mean, think about him. If you guys can see that guy licking his lips. Anyway, I digress. Women, come back. Come back to me. Anyway, guys, these guys were a hot mess of a group. They gathered together with the disciples, with Jesus gathered together with them, you know, from different backgrounds, and they were all comfortable with Jesus. And this is the power of the church. Our differences, our backgrounds uh, that have encountered the power of God, the power of Jesus make us unstoppable. Let me say that again. Our differences, our backgrounds that have encountered the power of God make us unstoppable in the world. No matter your background, Jesus has invited you to join his family. Now, here's the thing. Many of you have encountered Christians of believers and you've not felt accepted, you've not felt loved. You know, you, you feel a sense of being dismissed. I want to tell you people, this is our fault. And I want to apologize to you on our behalf as a church because we're humans, but that's not our savior's fault. Our savior was extraordinarily comfortable with people who were nothing like him. Okay, let's go back to dinner. And so the Pharisees were asking questions outside. Uh, and then G they, the disciples came back and told Jesus, Jesus what the Pharisees were saying. But on hearing this, this is what Jesus said, and I love it. Jesus said, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. 
Let's go and learn what this, and he tells them, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. I mean, just imagine an awkward moment. Speak of an awkward moment. There must have been pin drop silence. Somebody's eating soup, then he hears Jesus saying, I didn't come for the healthy, I came for the sick. Somebody must have choked on their drink in that moment. And, but this is what I picture whenever I hear this thing. I think Matthew or Jesus, when he was talking back, he must have shouted loudly even for the guys to hear outside. But this is what uh, Jesus said. Jesus said at Matthew, he looked at him in the eye and he said, uh, Matthew, you know you're a tax collector. I mean, look at your friends. Come on. Come on now. You know you're a sinner. He, I know that he looked at him and he said, you know, you're missing something. You're stuck. He looked at him and he said, I know that when you started this career, it was all about the money. But at some point, you felt stuck. I feel like Jesus leaned in and told the guy, my friend, I see you. I see the pain that you're in. I know that when you first started dating that guy, you went in because you wanted, uh, you know, you saw red flags, but you're like, you love him. And so you dismiss those issues and now you're feeling stuck. I know that for some of you, you're in a situation where you went for a business lunch with someone and now envelopes are being exchanged left, right, and center, and you feel stuck in that situation. Some of you right now, you feel stuck in a marriage that is going nowhere and you want to get out of that situation. You're asking for God to come and help you be unstuck. Let me tell you people, you need, uh, some of us need to come out of certain addictions. Some of us feel like we need to get out of certain habits. We're stuck and frustrated. You're tired of being the outsider like Matthew. Life, uh, you want a life that's more than this. You know that there's a distance. If there was a judgment call today, you know that you would fall short. I want to tell you something, church. Jesus came for you. Jesus is looking you in the eye this morning and saying, I want to sit here with you. I want us to have a conversation. I want us to begin a journey of getting unstuck. And it all begins with you saying, I follow. I think Jesus was just winsome. <laughs> he was so comfortable in his skin, he could say it out loud. He could say that this is your issue. You're sick and you need to come out of being sick. Matthew looking into the eyes of Jesus. I mean, he was done for. Imagine looking at his eyes. This guy knew that only this man can help me. Only this man is able to get me out of this frustrated space and give me freedom. And you know what he did? He risked it all. He left everything. He left his career and followed Jesus. He left everything to follow the King of Kings and experience freedom and experience being part of our community, experience life. And Jesus is making the same invitation to you today. Come, follow me. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. This is what Jesus says for us who are in the church. And I don't want you to miss out. He says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. I mean, this was a put down to, to believers or to those guys, the Pharisees, because they knew the Old Testament. They have studied it. And he was quoting Hosea 6.6 6 when he was, he was telling that Israel, you're going through the motions. You're doing the right thing, but you're missing the point. You know, and, and this is it, people. You can believe the right things. You can do the right things. You can behave the right way, but you may lose sight of the point. Jesus said, I came to call. Listen, we dare not become a church where we, uh, in fact, we dare not become a group of churches that is content about coming together and doing the right things, behaving the right way, and we stop there. If we find ourselves outside from the room that Jesus is in and the one that he's inhabiting, then we've lost the plot. Jesus came to call. Jesus came to call. Jesus came to call. He came to call the sick. He came to call these, those people who need a savior. Listen, I don't want a pastor in a church that is just content with doing the right things. I don't want to be in a church. I don't want my family to go to a church that is just content with saying the right things, behaving the right way, but stopping there. Jesus came to call. Jesus came to call. He is inviting us to partner with him. He has given us the privilege to partner with him in, in, in walking with people who have a suspicion that something is wrong. He's called us to partner with him with the people who feel that they're stuck in situations, with people who say, I'm sick. There's got to be more to this life. And this is what this message is for us who have been doing church for a while. Don't be left outside when Jesus is inside. Don't be left outside while he's in the room with the sick people, people who don't look like you, who people who don't talk like you, people who don't act like you. But he's saying, get in the room with them. Make them comfortable 
but then lead them to change, lead them to seek for help. And this is how this series is going to begin. And this is the one thing I'm asking you to do. Actively follow and get into the room. Actively follow and get into the room. Regardless of where you are, regardless of where you are on this spectrum, the invitation is for you to get into the room, to start actively following Jesus. Being a sinner doesn't disqualify you. In fact, it is a prerequisite. There is no sin. There is no sin. There is no sin that can stand in the way, no habit, no addiction. There is no illness. There is no problem that puts you outside of God's grace, of the circle that he is calling you into. You have been invited into a journey of getting unstuck. Being an unbeliever does not qualify you. All the disciples, Matthew was an unbeliever and then he became an unbeliever. Many times when Jesus was talking to the disciples, he told them, believe, believe, believe. The invitation is for you to join Jesus in a relationship. Sit with him at the dinner table. Sit with us every Sunday morning and let's eat together and learn from God. Get into the room where the sick are. Don't become a Pharisee. That was huge for me, that I should not become a Pharisee. The one thing I want to leave you guys with and I want you guys to really ask yourself is am I really following? Am I actively following? And am I in the room? And so I want to speak to two groups of people today as I close. This is what I want to say. If you've been doing church from the periphery, if you've been joining us randomly on Sunday mornings or you were in church but you always sat at the back, I want to invite you to actively follow today. Why wouldn't you, wouldn't you join our WhatsApp community? Maybe you need to join a life group in this season and become part of this church, this inner circle that Jesus is calling us into. I mean, listen, people, Matthew didn't know that his life would change. He had no idea what Jesus had in store for him. This guy wrote a bestseller. We're reading it this morning. This guy, 2,000 years later, people would still talk about him. You have no idea. I have no idea what God has in store for you, but I know that it's going to be great. I know that it's going to be good. Let's get unstuck together. And then I want to speak to those of you who have started. Uh, the last two months, we've been going through a Proverbs challenge uh, with people, with community. This is it, people. I want you to consider taking this conversation to the dinner table and taking it further. I want to invite you to have conversations where you look each other in the eye like Jesus did and say, we're going to go further. We're going to take this deeper. And I want to invite you to consider taking them through an, a discipleship experience that teaches you the foundations of our faith. And the best tool that I've found out there is Mizizi. So would you consider beginning a conversation to invite them to start Mizizi with you at the end of this, uh, at the beginning of August rather? Would you consider that? Church, God is inviting you to actively follow him and he's inviting you to get into the room. Can I pray for you? Let's pray, church. Father, thank you so much that we are beginning a journey of getting unstuck. Thank you for these men and these women who are hearing my voice, who are watching this morning, and they want to begin a journey of getting unstuck. And so this morning, we want to come and have a clean slate, and we ask that you would erase uh, every past uh, preconceptions that we had, and we want to come to you open, and we want to ask that you would teach us, that you would enable us to see ourselves as you see us. I want to pray for those who want to actively follow you, that you give them the courage and the boldness to pick up that phone and send a message to the WhatsApp community, to pick up that phone uh, and join a life group. I want to pray for that man and woman who have been fearlessly influencing by leading a group through Proverbs. But I want to pray that you'd give them courage and boldness to have conversations like you have modeled for us, that we would be able to have conversations with our Matthews and be able to lead them into a deeper experience of you. And so I pray for the church, I pray for all of us who are hearing this morning, that over this, this month, that you would visit us, that you would enable us to get unstuck from our various situations, our work, our relationships, our marriage, and that we would encounter the man, the man who was able to do so. In Jesus' name I pray and all God's people say, Amen. Thank you so, so much for worshiping with us today. My name is Pastor Mravi, or Pastor M. I'm the senior pastor of Mavuno Church, and I'm so excited that you're with us, you're worshiping with us as a family. Wasn't that an amazing word from Pastor Angie? And this message of Jesus, that we must follow him, that's what we're about. This is all that God is calling us to be about. 
And so I want to just encourage you right now, before you rush off, uh, go around in the room, if you're with your family, if you're whoever you're watching with, and, and, and ask yourself this question, what did God say to each of us? What did God say to everyone? And as everyone shares, then take a moment to pray. And let's get into the habit of just being followers, listening to what Jesus is telling us, that we may follow him. And I am excited. Uh, if you are one of the people who's, uh, who's new to this community, maybe you've even just joined us recently. Uh, there are many of you who have, who've just joined us recently. You're part of our community now. I'm so excited you're part of this community. Uh, please join our WhatsApp community. The link's on the screen if you haven't already. It's a great place for you to hear what's going on in the community. Just this last week, we had three days of prayer. An incredible and amazing time. Uh, somebody shared with me a testimony. I want to read it. Uh, her name was Jerry. And she said, Hi, Pastor M. That was a wonderful prayer session. This prayer session was led by Pastor Simon and Pastor Njoro. Uh, some of you are, who, who watched that on YouTube or participated. And she said, Indeed, I'm glad to say my search for a church has come to an end. Since I started attending Mavuno online services in March 2020, I've grown so much spiritually. Thank you so much, Mavuno. I'm not ashamed to say Jesus is now my personal savior. I am born again. And I want to say welcome to the family, Jerry, and anybody else who has become part of this family uh, through this time. We're so excited to have you here. As you join our WhatsApp community, let us know if there are prayer needs you have, or uh, alternatively, if you would like to go through this journey that Pastor Angie mentioned, uh, Mizizi, which is a 10-week experience that will help you grow in understanding who God is, what purpose he created you for, and then give your community of people to walk towards that purpose together. And maybe that may be the next step for you in following Jesus. For some of you, your next step is to help somebody else go through that journey. And so we want to encourage you to take that step. Uh, uh, the other thing I'll also say is in three weeks time, Fearless 2020 is happening. And you, you remember we've been talking about that. So if you haven't yet, go to fearlesssummit.org and sign up. Uh, we would love to have you as part of that. Uh, it's, we're, you have to actually get a pass to attend. But this year, we're actually giving our passes to you for free if you will sign up because you have to sign up so, to be able to get the pass. And so make sure that you get that. And then the final thing I'll say is thank you so much for your continued giving towards this ministry. We are so excited. I, I just want to affirm every one of you who has been so generous towards giving to God's work at Mavuno. And it's because of you that we've been able to do the things that we are able to do to bless our community and our world. And so if you would like to continue giving, 508-700 is the number that we use. And uh, that's an M-Pesa number. There's also information. If you go on the website, it'll give you other information for giving. And you can actually designate that. You can actually say spread hope if you want it to be part of our spread hope initiative to, to, to impact and to bless families that are affected by this COVID-19 crisis, especially economically. But also, if you would like to give towards the tithe and offering, uh, you could designate it that way. And that'll go towards just helping us to continue spreading the good news. Hey, I want to just bless you as you go into this week. May God be with you. May God strengthen you as you continue to follow. I'm going to take it up.